Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got an interesting trade to talk about today. So, this little guitar right here has been traded for the two things that just happen to be in these giant boxes. So I'm curious to know if you guys think I made a good trade or a bad trade. <laughs> and I think the answer really depends on when you're watching this video. If you're watching it right now when those things are brand new and hip, it, it was a pretty good trade on my part, I think. But if you're watching, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the line when those things are obsolete, you're going to be like, why would you do that trade? So this is that 76 Fender Stratocaster. That video that I did for this guitar went viral. I think at the time of recording this, it's around 300,000 views. That is really good for a vintage guitar on my channel. I mean, most brand new guitars don't even get that much. But the story behind this one is it actually started out as a consignment piece. But after a few people kind of backing out on this, the guy was just like, oh man, I would really like to sell it. What would you pay for it right now today? So I let him know what I would do and he just decided to take it because he was done with it. He was tired of not knowing when the money would come in. And this is an absolutely beautiful example. So I knew if I waited around long enough, this one could fetch top dollar simply because, you know, you've got this uh, slightly quilted neck. It's a nice, ash body. It kind of has some luminescence all on its own and beautiful wood grain figuring. And you know, it's the semi-wet desirable mocha color. As far as 70 strats go, this is a beautiful example. Somebody made me a trade offer because they said they've always wanted one of these types of Stratocasters. And I normally don't trade for amplifiers, but this is the one time I made an exception because I always wanted to try one of these out. So let's go ahead and uh, open this one first. But essentially the reason why he wanted to trade this in is he could not make sense of it. He's kind of a plug into the amp and play type of guy. And unfortunately I am too. So I'm not sure if this is gonna work out for me or not, but I've always wanted to try an Axe Effects system. I think Robert Baker uses one of these, but this is like the brand newest one, the Axe FX3. Apparently they're on back order. They can't quite make them. So I figure, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to get to try one of these, you know, for a couple of minutes to see if I actually like it. And if not, it shouldn't be that hard to sell. So between this and the other item that we have to unbox yet, I should be able to get what I was hoping I could get out of that Stratocaster. So Axe Effects, if you don't know, this is not like a sponsored episode or anything. <laughs> I'm not going to do too much research into this. It basically, it's kind of like that Spark amp, but better. You know, you can uh, do a bunch of different customizations things. This will mount into your rack. I mean, it'll give you any type of guitar tone that you could possibly want but this is a lot of options and I'm not much of a tinkerer. I'll have to try this out on my own time before I make any type of video on this cause just me flopping around trying to figure out how to plug this thing in probably would just be way too long. So that was interesting. I guess, I mean, how do you guys feel about me using something like this instead of a real amp? That's what's always kind of turned me off from like starting to use a Kemper or something because you can get so many different tones in there. I could do like the reamping. I could take the same playing sample and just play it through a bunch of different stuff, but it's not a real tube amp. So it's just so hard for me to decide, you know, is it actually worth uh, going that route? Because I know a lot of people actually use those. So it might actually be a more accurate representation of what you can expect. But this is something that just kind of sweetened the pot. If it was just the Axe Effects, I probably would have said, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. But I, <laughs> this is a, a signature amp of another YouTuber. I was expecting one of them lunchbox heads. I'm not quite sure what's in here. It's not a Marshall DSL-40C, I'll tell you that. He just probably happened to have this box. As he said, uh, that's what he's going back to. So I think this is what he purchased to not have all this other stuff that's more complex for his needs. Okay, so it lo looks like maybe he just double boxed it. Shipping amps always scares me because there's a bunch of stuff you have to do. Once upon a time, I actually bought like a brand new, like mint condition, 1964 Deluxe Reverb. We're talking, you know, the vintage stuff, the original, original. And it arrived, it was supposed to, you know, be good and ready to go, but instead, uh, all the tubes got like busted up, something wasn't working right, and that's the reason why I don't have a vintage deluxe reverb. So I've always wanted a, an original blackface from 64 
the pre-CBS variant. This is more so the size I was expecting. The signature amplifier, which there's not a lot of these on Reverb, so that tells me there's probably a cult following of these. But this is a signature Randall amp, which, I mean, if I'm honest, I've never actually heard of this company. But it's the signature amp of Ola England, the guy that does the Will It Chug show and a bunch of other stuff, but it's his Satan model, I guess. <laughs> so this is like a super grungy type amp, as far as what I know anyways. I really don't think I have a use for this. It's just too powerful for my little studio. Satan 50, so that probably means it's a 50 watt amp. That is very powerful. <laughs> So there, there's no way I'm keeping this amp. So if you're interested in this, you can definitely check it out on my reverb shop. But I guess we can try to plug it in to see what types of tones we get. And this is why I don't buy amps through the mail order anymore. It didn't work, or so I thought. So I was using that EOB Stratocaster and I didn't put the battery in. So when I put the battery in, everything was good. <laughs>
Well, that was definitely surprising. I thought I was gonna not like this amp at all, but honestly, I think it's quite good. I'm sure I could find use for it, but I think my Mesa Boogie does most of this other stuff as well, and I don't really do the super heavy stuff. And I was using my EOB Stratocaster for that tone demo, so we had a humbucker in the bridge position and kind of a single coil in the neck. I didn't really use the middle or anything else. Well, that's a pretty cool amp. I especially like the evil red lights in it.